Hello and welcome to part 3 of my tanking tutorial series. Today we're going to be having a quick look at the gunner seat of the tank and what you can do to really benefit your team and squad the most. Also a couple of extra things with the tank itself, how to get those big kill streaks, how to take down enemies in the smallest amount of time and also something about the tanks, its weak spots, which tank that you really want to be using and stuff like that. So in terms of gunning, there's a couple of things that you need to actually bear in mind. Whether you're going with the zoom optics or the thermal optics or whether you're going with auto loader or whatever, you need to bear in mind that your gun is going to overheat quite a lot and as a gunner it's not your job just to kill everything. That's what the tank's going to do or the main driver's going to do. Your job is to spot enemies and to make sure in certain situations where the tank, the main driver, can't actually get an angle or kill an enemy, you're ready to help him out. As you can see now, we're playing on Rush on a bit of road transmission and we've pushed up on the right hand side of the train where the MCOMs are. And I'm just trying to try my best to take down enemies, prioritizing, taking down anyone in close range while the main tank driver takes enemies from straight ahead. As you can see, the tank's already been taken down as well. So we're giving ourselves a good chance to take down a lot of enemies on this side of the map. As a gunner as well, it's your job to jump out and repair, especially if the tank driver itself has asked you to jump out and repair. If they haven't told you to jump out and you're on over half health, it's probably not a good idea to jump out the tank. As you can see now, we've pushed up on a big group of enemies, a clump of them, and I'm just doing my best to take down as many as I can, getting a bit of a kill streak going. See, I get a bit carried away at this point, trying to take down as many enemies as possible, when I should be having a look around me for any tanks that might be pushing, any enemies that might be close up, and that's something that I've learned over the last few months, as this was recorded a, uh, a few months ago. It's more important for me to be looking around and keeping us alive than it is for me to actually be taking down all those enemies in front. As a gunner as well, it is very, very important to spot people who are in the air, because remember a tank can't look up that high. So if you can spot enemies up in the air, parachuters, things like that, you're going to be helping your, your uh, teammate out more than you can think. As you can see now, this tank is actually taking quite a lot of damage from an enemy tank and a couple of engineers as well. So as a gunner, I have to make sure that I can jump out at any point and repair. As we take one more hit, we go to low power. I know it's a critical hit. My tank driver isn't gonna be able to move, so I jump out and repair him for a little bit. When you see that your tank has got a critical hit, it's more than likely that you're gonna have to jump out and repair anyway, so you can do, and then jump back in as soon as you can. Also letting your tank driver know you're in by shooting your gun as soon as you jump back in the tank is something you can do if you're not on comms with your squad. A very good tip if you're gunning in a tank as well and you're looking to repair, say you're pushing up against an enemy tank who's in front of you. You don't want to be jumping out of your tank with your gun facing forward because you're just going to get shot by the next come in, incoming shell. So the best thing to do is aim your gun to the back of the tank, jump out or to the side depending on where, you're, where your tank's positioned, and then stand behind the tank repairing, move in side to side so you don't get sniped as easily, and then the tank in front, if they're going to back up, they can back up and push you along the floor and you can repair while they continue to engage the tank in front. That's a very important thing to remember if you're gunning. As you can see on screen now, I'm gunning in a tank and we've managed to flank an enemy tank, I quickly spot this guy behind us and take him down as soon as before he can get another shot off. And as the guy in front's bailed, the tank's gone white, I've jumped out and taken it. Now a lot of people destroy empty tanks and it's really really annoying when you do this because you're, at the minute I'm stopping the enemy team with their bit of armour. It's not like I've stolen it from their base, they've jumped out of it and left it and we've taken the advantage and taken their tank. Now we have two tanks on our team, they don't have any tanks on this Zavod map. It's a big benefit for our team, so remember if you see an empty tank it's not always necessarily the best thing to go and blow it up. Now we're going to have a quick look at where the best spot is to shoot a tank. As you can see on this, I'm actually on the test range. I was fiddling with my uh, with my optics and the colours of stuff. I've actually chosen to go with a bright green and just see how that works out for me. But we'll move up and have a little look at what sort of damage I can do to this tank. This is how you want to be approaching a tank if you can, if they haven't spotted you. You want to be moving Instead of shooting them in the side, moving alongside, shooting them in the back, and then angling your tank to where their turret turns. Where I shoot now, as you can see, I'm doing over half damage. That is the weakest spot on a tank, as far as I'm aware. Shooting them on the turret, just at the back, when their turret's facing forward, shooting them there. You can take down a tank very, very fast. If you're using auto loader and an AP shell, you can take down a tank in, well, you can count how many seconds that takes, but it, it's around three seconds, maybe less. And you can be absolutely devastating with this effect, taking down two tanks in less than 10 seconds. You can also take down LAVs and stuff, shooting them in the back as well. I know there is a spot on the front of a tank that if you shoot will immobilize you or critically hit you. I don't exactly know where it is, but usually it's luck when someone hits that. 
but that spot on the back is somewhere that you can actually aim at quite easily especially if you flank the tank so bear that in mind. One more thing I'd quickly like to talk about is what tank you actually pick when you've spawned in. If you're on a certain team for instance as you can see now we have the left hand side we've got the Chinese tank the Type 99 and on the right hand side we have the Russian tank the T90A. These tanks have actually got quite a low profile the uh, the turret itself will spin around sort of an average trajectory the whole way around the tank. As we skip forward to look at Caesar Shanghai we're going to see the M1 Abrams the US tank. This one's profile at the rear is a lot different you can see that there's a lot more area to shoot at the back of the American tank and also if you notice the next time you get an American tank and you spin around the turret you're going to find that you can't actually shoot any enemy infantry right behind you because the angle of the turret is too high due to that large area and uh, the large angle at the back of the tank. In terms of being more effective as a tanker there are a couple of things that you you should probably do and maybe look to integrate into your the way that you play the game if you haven't already. Always make sure you look behind you because too many people get C4 from behind, making sure that you rock backwards and forwards. You get yourself a lot of road kills this way. Never really stay still because you're just an easier target to hit. Always make sure you scan the area before you approach it using your thermal optics or using your zoom if that's what you've chosen to go for. Don't get caught out by slams or by C4 or by mines that have been left on the road. Make sure that you see them. It's an easy thing to do and you'll find yourself as long as you scan you find yourself not getting killed by these things very often. If you're using the HMG or if you're the gunner using the machine gun, you make sure you burst instead of just holding down auto. The spread of these weapons are massive so unless you're shooting a large target like an MRAP or a uh, one of the artilleries or a helicopter, burst mode is a lot better. You find yourself taking down snipers a lot easier if you tap fire it instead of or burst fire it instead of just spraying everywhere. Try not to overheat your weapons as well. That goes for your machine guns with your AP shell. Just keep an eye on your actual, uh, on your the amount of ammo that you've got. It's not Battlefield 3, you don't get unlimited ammo. You're going to be finding out that you can only take down a couple of tanks, or if you approach a tank and you're low on ammo, it really does suck realizing that there's nothing you can do. Unless, of course, you're running a secondary shell that can uh, deal out some damage. Try to use comms if you can or VoIP. It will really help you if you have your gunner and you can tell them when to jump out and to rep. Also if you've got someone else in your team who can call out if there's a C4 quad or a jet strafing in or an enemy attack helicopter that's gunning for you, anything like that. It really does make a difference and you'll find out that you become a lot more tactical if you're on uh, TeamSpeak or something with your friends. One thing to think about as well if you're trying to shoot down helicopters and jets when you're using an AP shell and the Coaxial HMG it's a good idea to shoot them with the HMG because you'll do a lot of damage and I've picked up so many kills especially with something that's just been hit by a tank shell or by a TV and is disabled you can pick up the kills really really easy with your HMG you'll also shoot out pilots and things like that and it's a lot easier to hit a helicopter with an HMG than it is with your primary tank shell also staying still when you shoot a helicopter is really really important and uh, using the scenery and the environment around you to ramp up to get that angle taking out a helicopter that's something that you should be doing as well. There's no point in you staying on flat ground just waiting for a helicopter to drop in front of you. You want to be closing angles and things and changing the way that you're approaching it in order to get the kill. As well, if you are being strafed by a jet or a helicopter, a very useful thing to do is drive towards them really, really fast. A lot of people, or too many people I see who are in a tank and they have an enemy attack helicopter in front of them, they reverse away. That's easy for the attack helicopter to shoot you because all they're going to do is just slow down the way that they're flying and then they can get more hits on you. So you want to be closing the angle, driving towards them as much as you can and saving your APS for usually their second strafe. Alright then guys, I hope you did enjoy this three part series. Um, I've gone for more of an informative way of telling you guys how to, um, how to use your tank. I'm by no means a professional in this, I really am not. I've just taken a liking to the tank in recent weeks especially since the patch and a couple of guys uh, some people have been requesting me do these videos so I thought that I'd get right to it let you guys know exactly how I like to tank and a couple of uh, hopefully useful ideas for you guys thanks very much for watching leave a like and comment if you did enjoy and I'll see you in the next episode